welcome back to another lesson in Swift for Beginners. In today's lesson, we will be covering the guard statement. So once again, we're back in our playground. Um, we've gotten rid of everything from the last lesson and we have our title up here. So let's jump right into things. So a guard statement uh, is fairly common in more, uh, more so newer languages and what people like to call functional languages. And it's very similar uh, to an if statement that we saw in our if else conditions video. So let's just start off by writing a function um, and let's call it string equals, or let's call it um, number larger than five. Let's say number larger than five, let's go with this. It'll take a parameter of a number, it'll be an int, this function will return a bool, let's just say it returns true. So a guard statement, so before we even talk about the guard, in theory what you would do in here is you would say if number is less than five, let's return false, right? Which makes sense. Um, and this is complaining because hopefully that's good. Yeah, so basically if the number is less than five, we're gonna say false, this number is not larger than five. Otherwise, it won't come into here and won't go to true. So how would we write this as a guard statement? So all we would do is change this to guard, um, and this would be an else. So it's very similar to an if else, but what you're basically saying in the statement is very similar, it's just worded a little differently. So in layman's terms, it you're, what, what you're saying is you're guarding, you wanna make sure that number um, is greater than five, right? Um, so it's the inverse. So if the number is greater than five, you can continue down here, you're guarding against this case. But if the number is not greater than five, go into this else, right? So in other words, if the number is not is less than five, you're gonna come into this else and we're gonna return false and that's gonna be the end of our function because you know we returned already here, we, we can't go further down, the code execution in our function has stopped. So you can see the similarity between the two statements, but you can also see that the guard, if you throw it onto one line like this, is a little cleaner in terms of um, visualizing it and readability sake. But that's all a guard really is. It is a little fancier way to do an if else condition. The other big benefit to a guard, similar to an if condition, is you can comma separate in here um, multiple things that you're guarding. So you can say if number is uh, greater than five, and number is greater than four, which realistically doesn't make sense to do this in an actual app because if it was greater than five, it would be greater than four as well. But for demonstration purposes, you can chain on multiple things you wanna guard. So for example, let's say you are building a login form and the person needs to type in a username and a password in an iOS app. When they press sign in, you wanna make sure that there is text in both of those fields before you try to sign the person in. So you might do something like guard, make sure this field has text, and guard, make sure the password field has text. If they don't, you can maybe throw like a pop-up and show the user an error message and say, hey, you need to enter in something so we can sign you in. So that's what a guard statement essentially is. Now, what I wanna show you is the other very common thing that a guard statement is used for, and that's for unwrapping optionals. So if you're not familiar with optionals or unwrapping them, um, I encourage you to go back to an older lesson and take a look at that as it's super important. But what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna say let um, text, uh, which is a string optional equal nil. And down here, we're gonna say, let's make this a var so we can reassign it. We're gonna say text uh, at this point is gonna equal Hello world, and we actually don't even need this because this is nil by default, and we can get rid of this function. But basically we've created a variable, it's text, um, the type is string optional, 
and we're setting it to hello world down here. So now if we want to use this uh, text and actually get access to it, in a prior video, we've seen that we need to unwrap it. And we would do that by doing something like if let value equals text, then if we print value, we'll see down here that we get our text. Because something optional is again, kind of like a box and you need to check that there is something inside of said box so you can get at the actual value. So you can, as you can kind of imagine, do this through a guard statement as well. So we're gonna do guard let value equals text else return. Um, and then down here we can say print value. And this might yell at us because we're doing a return outside of a function, which it is. So let's put this in a function. Let's put this right here. Um, hopefully that should solve it, which it does. And then let's get rid of this print so we can call this function and um, make sure that's working. So let's call print value. And at this point, we should get hello world done here, which we do. So now imagine if we didn't set the text here. So if we go and comment out this line, we won't get a print here. Because it's going to go into this function and it's going to say, hey, I'm going to guard and make sure there's a value inside of this text. And if there is, we can keep going. We're, we're really good to go. But if there's not, just return out of this function and don't continue on. So it's a little more readable in my personal opinion. You're guarding something. Um, is there is correct and your criteria is, is fulfilled um, and it's less verbose than an if statement so using guards to unwrap optionals and using guards as a simpler way to replace uh, if else conditions is wildly popular in swift and it's something that i strongly suggest that you be comfortable with uh, you might not have seen it in older languages older programming languages if you're if you have any background in older programming languages but that's essentially what a guard is, and I think that's where I will leave it for this lesson. Um, I hope I was able to explain guard statements well to you. If you like this video, please do leave a like, follow, subscribe, share. It helps a lot quite a bit. Um, don't hesitate to leave comments in terms of uh, clarity or asking for help or questions. More than happy to help, and I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks for watching.